How does the space shuttle take off? How do rocket engines work? Well, a lot of people think that all the hot gases leaving the bottom of the rocket push against the ground, and that makes the space shuttle go up. But if that were true, how could the space shuttle engines work in outer space where there's no ground to push against? Stay tuned and find out. To explore the nature of force, we use these two force probes, which can record how much force they use on this graph. And you'll notice this probe, which is red, will record in red here, and this probe, which we've marked blue, will record here, so that both probes will record on the graph at the same time. So what we did is we ran this, and we had, at some times, the probe that's red pull, and the one that's on the right, the blue one, not pull, and sometimes we had the blue one pull and the red one not pull, and sometimes we had them both pull together, and sometimes we had them both pull together hard, and sometimes both pull together soft, and we recorded all of those things on this graph. So let's watch what happens. So in some of these, the blue one is not moving, but the red one is. And in some of these, the red one is moving and the blue one's not. And in some of them, they're both moving. But notice the interesting thing is, it would be impossible to tell by looking at this which one is moving and which one isn't. No matter whether they both move or one of them moves or the other one moves, the readings of force for the two probes are always exactly the same. I can't tell from this picture whether the red one's pulling and the blue one's not, or the blue one's pulling and the red one's not. I can't tell from this picture. The forces always completely match. The red one is pulling in one direction, and that's why this graph is up, and the blue one is pulling in the other direction, and that's why it's down. So I'm noticing that the forces are always equal to each other, but in the opposite direction. So the red one and the blue one equal in amount of force, but opposite in direction. So every time there's a pull, they pull the same amount, and they pull in the opposite direction. And what also seems interesting here is the forces always seem to come in pairs. If only one force probe is moving, I still get both forces. The forces always come in pairs. I never get just one force. Back when we started our study of forces, we gave this definition of a force. We said that a force is a push or a pull upon an object that results from its interaction with another object. So we defined a force as an interaction between two objects. Now, I'm talking about force. Ooh, this is nasty. Uh, what do we have here? Well, we have the hand, which is an object, uh, interacting with a mirror, which is another object, and the hand clearly exerts a force on the mirror, which it looks like it broke the mirror, but the, there's an interaction because the mirror exerts a force back on the hand, which it looks like it kind of cut the hand. Is it possible for the hand to be in contact with the glass without the glass being in contact with the hand? I think not. So a term that we could use is we could say the action force was the hand hit the glass, which I can tell definitely happened because the glass was broken, and there was a reaction force. The glass hit his hand. Result, the glass cut the hand. So it is impossible for there to be an interaction between these two objects without both objects being affected. So what do we learn from this? First of all, we learn that forces come in pairs. You cannot have a single force all by itself. It is impossible for two objects to interact without both objects being affected. And this leads us to Newton's third law which says for every action force, like the hand hitting the glass, there is an equal and opposite reaction force, which is the glass hitting the hand. Now, equal in magnitude means the amount of the force is the same, but the direction of the force is opposite. 
So when we use the force probes, we notice that although the amount of the pulling, the red one and the blue one, was always the same, equal in magnitude, they pulled in opposite directions. The force of the hand on the glass was the same in magnitude as the glass on the hand, but they pushed in opposite directions. Well, here's a cool before and after picture, high-speed picture of a tennis ball hitting a tennis racket, or a tennis racket hitting a tennis ball. And I notice that uh, this is right before they hit. And then right as the racket is hitting the ball, notice this. I notice that the racket strings are bent. And if we asked why is that, you'd say, well, because the ball's hitting it. But I also notice that the ball is kind of flattened compared to what it normally is. So why is the tennis ball flattened? Because the racket hits the ball. So the racket strings are bent because the ball is hitting the racket. The ball is flattened because the racket strings are hitting the ball. So here we have an example of action and reaction forces. The action force would be the racket hitting the ball. The reaction force would be the ball hitting the racket. Newton's third law would say the ball hits the racket just as hard as the racket hits the ball, but they hit in opposite directions. So the ball is being pushed inward this way, but the racket string, so the ball, the force of the racket on the ball would be to the right, the force of the ball on the racket would be to the left. Can you state the action and reaction forces in each picture? Let's look at this one first. There was some physics class where they were pushing bowling balls around with brooms. And this is an action photo. You can see how blurry it is of the broom pushing the bowling ball. And so we're pushing the bowling ball from right to left. So the broom is pushing on the bowling ball. It would be an action force. But notice how, although the broom is doing the pushing, the broom's bristles are bent backwards because... The broom is pushing on the bowling ball, but the bowling ball is pushing back on the broom in the opposite direction. Uh, this one looks kind of ugly. Uh, notice the soccer ball is not really round anymore here because the face is pushing in the soccer ball. That would be the action force. But the soccer ball is certainly having an effect on the face. So if soccer ball hitting face is action force, face hitting soccer ball is the reaction force. And notice here, too, this is a pretty cool picture. You've got a bat hitting a ball, and you can kind of see that the ball is flattened here. So the bat hitting the ball would be the action force, but the ball actually hits the bat is the reaction force, and sometimes it causes the bat to break. So now back to our original question. How does the space shuttle work? How do rocket engines work, even in outer space? Well, Newton's third law can explain it. And the basis of it is exactly the same principle as what when you blow up a balloon and you let go of it and it flies around the room. It's the same principle. So when you blow up the balloon, the balloon is filled with air. And then when you let go of it, the balloon, because it's elastic, pushes the air out the hole. So the action force would be the balloon pushing air out the hole. And according to Newton's third law, if the balloon pushes the air down then the air, as it leaves, pushes the balloon up. And that's why the balloon takes off. In a rocket engine, what you basically have is, if this is the engine part here, you have a big explosion take place in here. And the gas, as it explodes, bangs around on the inside of the rocket engine, and at the end of the rocket engine, you've got a hole. So the gases come out the hole, so we would say that the rocket engine pushes the gases out of the hole, out of the back of the rocket. So if the engine pushes the gases out the back, then the gases push the engine forward. So certainly the gases do push against something, but it's not the ground, it's the rocket engine. So if the gases go this way, then the rocket goes that way. And so Newton's third law explains how rocket engines work.